Hello everyone, Logan here from Decode Your Reality, and this is Random Thoughts version number six, where we take seven different, completely different topics and kind of blend them all together and decode them. And you know, it just seems that every time I make one of these, these topics suck me in. They just lead me to the next one. I don't even have to think about it. And I'm sure some of you watching this have exactly the same consequences happening to you. And you know, it's because of all of you that I'm here doing this great work. So I thank you so very much for your support. For those of you that are new, well, thank you very much. Welcome and just follow the breadcrumbs as I like to say. We're putting a puzzle together using multiple layers of the mystical arts. You know, we use the cards of illumination, the 52 cards. There are four suits matching the four seasons and they're highly, highly accurate. And there's going to be some that are going to describe you and your life and I highly suggest studying yourself. I have a video how to decode yourself. We also use alchemy. We use the elements of the periodic table and we tie those into the cards of illumination and the tarot deck as well. And let's not forget, since we all speak magic spells using the spoken word, we can break those letters into numbers, which is then called numerology. So we're going to be blending all these things together. And, you know, I'm using a lot of pie now, folks. You know, my last name is Payette or Piet. A lot of people call me Piet or Payette, but that's in my name, Payette, P-I-E. TTE and I'm using a lot of pie and now I understand why and I'm seeing probably the most accuracy out of anything that I use or have used throughout my decodes in the years I've been doing this research. So I'm hoping you use the same things and these tools went on. Anyway, here are the top seven categories, folks. Number one, we're going to be talking about blood types. You know, what's your blood type? Do you know what your blood type is? It's kind of important, I think. I mean, I'm a nutritionist certified and, you know, I mean, I think blood types is important. There's eat right for your blood type. But, you know, where's our blood come from? You know, it's a very sacred thing and there's a really good reason. But it's going to tell us where our origins are from. We're going to be talking about the country of Japan, the far, far east, you know, the rising sun country. And then we're going to be talking about our DNA as well deoxyribonucleic acid that's the double helix in science you know and the nucleotides and all that we're going to be bringing that into this we're going to be getting into the 1939 classic movie the wizard of oz we're also going to be talking about the serpent the snake the serpens in latin the serpent we're also going to be talking about the beautiful esoteric symbol the ankh what that's going to mean and then of course we're going to follow it up with one of my favorite topics illumination and that's what we're here for folks knowledge wisdom enlightenment and that's get it gets kind of gets you out of your prison so once you understand this kind of stuff it allows you to have the keys to your kingdom but you got to study yourself so here we go we're going to the topic number one is the blood types what's your blood type Looking at it through the English ordinal cipher in numerology, we have a total of 834. Notice that it is, no matter what cipher you use, it's going to be the same letters. There are 74 letters. I mean, how convenient, right? 74 letters, and that's a match of the element tungsten and the crown, because the 23rd letter is the letter W. And... The 834 is a big one when it's tied to pi, folks. It's found at the 1091st decimal digit of pi. That's tied to the element osmium, because osmium has an atomic weight or mass of 191, matching the 1091. You just drop that zero, but nonetheless, the zero means pi. It means infinite potential. And it's very fitting. I mean, think about it. The Wizard of Oz, you know running our blood types can you see that and you know the 76 element osmium is tied to the 76 card in the tarot deck these have multiple numbers attached to them by the way i'm finding 
so many different layers to observe them from, but the charts that I'm currently using now, the 76 card is the Queen of Pentacles. And, you know, the Queen gives birth, and the Pentacles means diamonds, it means physical things. Would that mean us, the Queen, giving birth to all human beings, all blood types? Let's not forget, Queen of Pentacles is the 74, which is tied to tungsten, which is tied to light bulbs, illumination. They used to make filament in tungsten. We're going to get into that today, which is all leading to the same thing. What about the Chaldean? Again, you know, what's your blood type? There are the, you know, eight different blood types. You know, what's your blood type? Through the Chaldean, it's a 286. Kevin, you're going to like this one. 286 is tied to, of course, Nihonium, which is named after the country Japan, where it was discovered or synthesized because it's a synthetic element. But it doesn't matter about the element. It has really all to do with the numerology and just putting the puzzle together. Japan, the name of Japan is Nihon, or Nihon, however you pronounce it. And look at this, folks. This is where, you know, it's like, you see how this puzzle goes together? I mean, the country of Japan, the real name of it, coming after the element, coming after the blood types, is a 23, and the word blood has a numerology output of 23. I mean, you know, look at, look at the connections there. And you'll see how, you know, again, this matrix, this world we live in is so beautifully orchestrated. The software that it was written under is absolutely mind-blowing. It's just, the more I research, it's just unbelievable. Let's go a little bit further. Nihonium is the element tied to 286, which are the eight blood types. That's a 113. Well, you know, interestingly enough, the element cadmium has an atomic weight or mass of 113, so it's a match to the Nihonium. And when you add these two elements up, because they're partners on the elements of the periodic table, because they match that number, we get a number of 400.085, and the 400 through the string of pi, look at where it lands, 1,174. And if you've been following my work, well, you know what the 174 or the 741 leads to? It would be the energy or the deity or the Lord Lucifer. Now, is this where our blood type comes from, you know? Uh, are we from the serpent clan? You know, that's why I have serpent in this presentation. But nonetheless, there's that 74 again, which is a match to this. And of course, 74 is about illumination, folks. You know, is that what we're looking at here? So here it is, Nihonium, tied to the 113 or the 286 found in the blood types underneath the Chaldean cipher, and that's Nihon. And, you know, when you go study the latitude longitude, another way, another vantage point, you can study the, uh, the matrix. And the gr this is where we're talking about the grid that overlays the Earth. And, you know, X marks the spot. It'll take its energy from the north, moving down south, and then either west to east or east to west, and then X marks the spot. And, you know, where you were born will have some significance. You should measure your latitude, longitude. Nonetheless, the capital of Japan is Tokyo, and, you know, it pretty much has the same uh, latitude, longitude. But nonetheless, when you add up 35 and 139, you get the number 174, which, you know, again, is Lucifer's numbers, 741. We're going to get into that. Japan is known as the land of the rising sun. Now, you know, Japan is the Far East. Is it possible? Is this too far-fetched to think or believe that our origins are actually from the Far East? I mean, you, everything we were told moves from East to West. And, you know, the old ancient writing systems, they wrote that way. They didn't write left to right. They wrote right to left. So is it too far-fetched to believe that we actually are all descendants from the country of Japan? I mean, the blood's leading into it. And look at what the land of the rising sun, this is what this country's name, this is what their motto is. The rising sun. Just remember that. Just use your imagination. Rising sun. You know, the land of the rising sun has a numerology in the English of the 248 that's tied to the 96th element, Curium. 
because it has an atomic weight of 248. It has many atomic weights, but nonetheless, the big standout is the 96. That is the yin yang. You know, the land of the rising sun is linked to the yin yang and perhaps leading to the double snake, the caduceus, which is right here. You know, which is why I have DNA in this presentation. You see why this all leads to the same origins, folks? It just tells a story. It's quite fascinating. So Japan following up and finishing this category, Japan through the Chaldean. Notice it's a two-syllable word. A lot of my research I did in the past, I would break up these words into their respected syllables. And you can tell a story that way as well, because that's how it rolls off the lips. Japan, we say Japan. So it's separated. You can measure it that way, but... Nonetheless, it's Ja, you know, praise Ja, Ja Pan. I didn't name it that. And, you know, if you follow my work, you know, I believe man's being used. I think we're being used, folks, and the game is fixed. And we're not naming anything. It is using us to name the things in the world. And you have to define what that it would be. Ja, so Ja Pan, you know, it's 16 in Chaldean. That's a direct link to the 16th card in the tarot called the tower and this is a card of masculinity of course this can be observed as a tower being destroyed by lightning people jumping out of it, it can be observed as you know the sexual reproduction organ of the male you know ejaculating it's kind of really funky when you study this kind of stuff a phallus what's why the washington monument and all that stuff they're all labeled after this tower and you know here are the six days of creation as well keep in mind you know the si the sixth day was the last day the seventh day was the day of rest six is the pineal gland pineal gland is the third eye so there's a lot of you know links to this here and perhaps this is where our origins come from this country or maybe around about where it used to be in the ocean maybe it got leveled and there was an, there was a country that was farther than that i don't know but Nonetheless, look at the sinks to this, you know, if we were born in this area or originated, this would be the origination of all of that using the tower card, the symbolism of that. So a really interesting layer to observe it from. Moving into the next category, the Greek god Pan. Oh, I don't think I just have this one as a category, but nonetheless, Japan and Pan and um, that's why I wanted to include this because you know pan originated from the Greek language so I like to you know when I do my decodes I like to go to as far original as I can and then you know really look and observe from those perspectives and here's pan and what I wanted to point out is you know it starts off with the uh, the the pie here and this is using the gematronator you you know there's several ways you can observe the Greek because it was changed a few times um, different letters and moving around so the numerology can can um, be different uh, in some different ciphers but nonetheless in this one using gematronator the first letter of pan the p is pi 3.14 the perfect circle and that's why i have the symbol there nonetheless it's a 32 overall and that's a match of the zodiac sign capricorn which is the 10th sign of the great zodiac and capricorn's the sea goat and pan you know if you study the mythology of pan well it looks a hell of a lot like a goat to me half man half goat does it not so is this where our origins are coming from japan and pan and capricorn you know capricorn means earth is there a link there to what i'm showing notice using this way of decoding of course i call this alchemology where you take alchemy and numerology and mix them together but you have chlorine hydrogen and silicon 1714 notice the 174 in this again folks which again is a reference to lucifer which was a reference to blood when we add up over in the trusty calculator these three elements representing the word pan in the greek originally the word we get a 63 0.954 and there's a few ways we can observe it it is linked to the element copper the 29th element but the most abundant format of zinc notice the lightning bolt there z the double seven seventy seven well zinc is a match to the 63 the 30th element 
And if you study alchemy, you know, this is one of the last elements and before it turns into another layer on the periodic table. So it's uh, rather significant. The 30th card in the Native American tarot is the rabbit, as in, you know, pull the rabbit out of your hat, you know. And when you look at pi, the 30 appears at the 64th decimal digit of pi. And 64 is a huge number because, well, we're going to follow the white rabbit. This was the matrix, one of the screenshots. Follow the white rabbit, Neo. I wonder if they were talking about this. But see, this is where the 174, the 74 comes, 741 comes into play. Let me, I'm going to get on the 64, but let me bring this out. This is one of Lucifer's, I feel, one of Lucifer's elements. Lutetium, and you know, this was Manly P. Hall in his great book, The Secret Teachings of All Ages, the great Freemason, Manly P. Hall. He said Lucifer is represented by the number 741. You've been following my research. You've seen this over and over now in many of the decodes showing what it's linked to. And you know, look, Lucifer, Lu, Lutetium, I mean, it's a no-brainer. And then the 741 matches up with the 174 of the atomic mass of this element right here. And, you know, again, it's linked to the 174 in the, you know, latitude, longitude of Japan. It's linked to the blood as I showed. And follow the white rabbit, you know, is Lucifer the white rabbit? Is that what this is saying? Well, we're going to go back here again. And remember, the rabbit is derived from zinc, which is derived from pan, which has Capricorn linked to it. And that appears at the 64th decimal digit of pi, the number 30 does. 64 is a huge number because that's how many squares there are on a chessboard. Do you think they did that on accident? Or do you think they really kind of knew what was going on? You know, I mean, there it is, folks, right there. Right at the 64th digit is the number 3. 3 zero. You know, and what's... Interesting, you know, here in the DNA now, we get into the DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, it's a number 69, which is the yin-yang again, folks, which was I showed, which was tied to land of the rising sun, and perhaps where our origins come from, Japan, where our blood comes from, you know, and blood is based upon DNA, you know, it's all connected in science, and here is... You know, the explanation of that, why I have that here, well, there are 64 different combinations of the DNA in the, in the codons. And, um, you know, that's probably the reason why they have 64 squares in the chessboard. So moving along, let's measure this right here. The four nucleotides that are found in the, uh, in the double helix, in the DNA, in the mRNA which can produce 64 different combinations. Look at the outcome that we get, folks. A number 32, which is a match of the Greek spelling, the original spelling of Pan, which also matches Capricorn, the sea goat. And we live in the sea of space, do we not? That's where Capricorn got its name from. Well, it's not a water goat. It's we live in the sea of space. Now we bring in our next topic, the Wizard of Oz. What does the Wizard of Oz have to do with our blood and Japan and Pan and our DNA? Well, folks, who is Oz? Could it be Pan? I mean, we know it was a guy behind a curtain who was not this big bad wolf. It was this little dude behind a green curtain that was a nobody. I mean, he was just scared to really let his guard down he had to try to beat his big bad wolf which he really wasn't but nonetheless look at this the wizard of oz equals the number 64 matching that of our dna the codones in our dna how about that and of course all these characters are trying to find a piece of them perhaps indicating they're missing something from their dna the budget for the wizard of oz was 2.8 million dollars which is a Direct match in the numerology of Lucifer and the Chaldean, that's a 28. It was released in 1939, notice the number 39, I didn't even put that in there, that's yttrium, that's 88 time travel, that's tied to many, many things, but when we say 1939, we get, yet again, 
the number 174, which again is tied to Lucifer. So, you know, you have Lucifer tied to the year it came out and you have Lucifer tied to the budget and then you have Lucifer, to, Lucifer tied to our DNA. I mean, you know, folks, are you beginning to see what I'm seeing here? And of course, remember, Lucifer is supposed to be the light bringer. You know, so here's the guy who directed the Wizard of Oz classic movie, Victor Lonzo Fleming. Victor Fleming, he was born on February 23rd. Now we bring the cards of illumination. The February 23rd birth card, folks, is the Two of Diamonds. Folks, it's the 28th card in the lineage of the Cards of Illumination. How about that? This dude who directed, who was responsible for much of the movie's direction, has the birth card, and that's tied to Lucifer, the 28th in numerology? Hmm. Kind of interesting, right? I mean, here's another sync. February 23rd is the 54th day of the year, and that has 311 days remaining, which is the mirror of the 113, which is Nihonium, which was tied to the 286, which was tied to our blood types. That brings our next topic, the serpent. Now, I'm not going to play this clip, but in February of 2018 or 2000 and I should say not 18 I think it's 2015 or 16 or something like that Trump actually started to read this poem called the snake and I don't know what that he was trying to read it and talk about the borders and how we have to be careful not to let people in the borders like snakes you know they're very slippery and you know, the whole snake story. And so he read this poem. And so I, you know, I was just searching for stuff on the snake. And this is what popped up, folks. And I'm like, okay, I'll check it out. I read it. I watched it. It was only three minutes long. But nonetheless, I started to decode this. And look, folks, look at what I found. And that's what I'm seeing. How, how else are you to, how else am I to explain this? How else are you to perceive this and ponder what I'm going to show you based upon what I've been showing you? How do you explain these links? other than the game of life, is fixed. You know, he read it on February 23rd. I have the date, the, the year wrong. But anyway, he read it on February 23rd, this poem, in front of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. And this is exactly his words. I had to watch it a few times. He actually threw in a few words that were not in relation to the original song that was written, I think, by Al Davis. But look at the numbering output of this, folks, on what he said, adding in his little words that weren't part of the original format. Look at the numbers, folks. There's the 174. There's the 1177. And then let's not forget, there's the 4008. And if you remember, 4008 is tied to the 48th element, cadmium, which is tied to the 113, which is why I wanted to show that. So you see what I'm saying about the sinks are crazy. I mean, it would be different if it was just a poem, but he it was about the snake. And why was he discussing this? And, and we can go further on this because look at this. This is, this is when he, uh, this is CNN. And they said, you know, he had did it on Friday. This was on Sunday, so it was February 23rd. Well, February 23rd, folks, is the Two of Diamonds card. Once again, the 28th card talking about Lucifer. And I mean, I just showed that with Victor Fleming's birthday card on the Wizard of Oz. You know, and we're talking about the serpent here. I mean, what are the odds, folks, he reads this poem, The Snake, on a day that is linked to the character Lucifer because it's the 28th card? You see what I'm saying about these sinks? This is the, um, if you want, I'm going to leave the link in the description below so you can watch the original reading of that uh, poem because this is who he dedicates the actual poem to. John Kelly, who was the former White House Chief of Staff, the 28th White House Chief of Staff, I might mind you, the 28th White House Chief of Staff, folks. So he reads this on the 23rd, 
of February has a two of diamonds, the 28th card, Lucifer. This dude is the 28th White House Chief of Staff. And look at his name in numerology, folks. He's got a 182 and a 55. And I'm going to get into that. 182 is tungsten, which is illumination. And 55, as you know, is linked to the numerology of Satan in the English ordinal. This guy was born May 11th, and the May 11th card, his one of his birth cards, is the Eight of Diamonds. And I, I've shown this one. You know, I mean, Elon Musk has this. I mean, you know, there are other people I'm finding with this. And does this mean that everybody's going to be, you know, a bad person, if you will, if we label it that way? Of course not. But when you understand these people that are in those top positions, what do you think they're going to be all about? You know, when you observe it this way. And, you know, here is Lucifer's sigil, and it fits right over the Eight of Diamonds. Once again, thank you, Kevin Clark. But this one fits right over the Eight of Diamonds and completely, you know, crosses over all those points. And if you understand what the number eight means, folks, well, I don't got to really describe anything other than that. Okay? And here is the serpent. When we break down the word serpent, it becomes the number 32. That's a direct match of the word Capricorn, which, of course, here it is again. The word Pan in the original Greek spelling, as in Japan, as in the land of the rising sun, which was linked to the 96 and the two snakes, because that's what the yin-yang is. It's the two snakes coiled together, the caduceus. I showed that earlier. See how this is all connected? Notice the number 32 in the string of pi appears at the 15th decimal digit. Now, I could have threw in the 15th card in the tarot, which is the devil card. But I wanted to point out, when you take these digits here, where it appears, here it is, and you add it up, it breaks down to the number 74, which is tungsten, folks which is illumination, which is crown, because W is the 23rd letter. Anytime you ever get a 74, you should automatically link it to tungsten, which is linked to, uh, linked to illumination and the crown, because W is the 23rd letter matching that of the word crown. So is the serpent the crown? Or is just the serpent going up and reaching that pineal gland for illumination? You know, the snake has a forked tongue. I mean, there are only several animals or reptiles. There are only reptiles that have a forked tongue. You got the Komodo dragon. The Komodo dragon has a forked tongue. The great dragon was hurled down. You got the snake. You got some lizards. All reptiles, folks. And notice the word forked tongue. Look at the two outcomes that we get. 141 and 58. And what's interesting about that, not many... Outcomes will look like this using multiple ciphers. They're both connected in the element cerium. The 58th element has an atomic mass of 141. And so, you know, there we find a match with the element nickel because nickel has an average atomic mass of 58. So nickel is tied to cerium. And you can do some more decoding on this. I just didn't want to go gangbuster crazy because I had so much information to deliver. Notice when you break down the words forked tongue, I mean, it's describing the tongue. It, tongue. The fork means it's an adjective. The tongue means it's a noun. There's the 30 again, which is linked to pan. And then you have the fork. It's a forked tongue. And forked is a 28 matching that of Lucifer. Using the same system too, Chaldean folks. I'm not, you know, mixing and matching. I know, you know, it's easy to do that. But, you know, I'm showing this is solid information right here. Is this the snake? I mean, and we're talking about theology and the serpent deceiving the first human beings. If that's really an allegory, that's fine. I personally think it's an allegory. I don't think it was a real story, but nonetheless, the story has merit because of look at these sinks right here. So this is, you know, our next topic, the Ankh. Thank you, Jason Zuckerman, for kind of uh, making me want to include this in this decode. Um, I don't know if you've ever observed the symbol as two different letters. Well, I do. Um, you know, you can clearly see it has an O, and then it has a T attached to the bottom. I mean, 
Do you see it? It's an O and a T. And you know, the O stands for infinity because that's the pi symbol. And T is the crucifixion letter. And that just happens to be the number 74 in the Chaldean, which is linked to tungsten. Going a little bit further, Ankh in the Chaldean, when we say that, it's a number 13, and that's related to the death card, of course, folks, because the Ankh means moving on to the next life. And of course, you got to die to do that. So it's very fitting that this fits in just like this, and it completely you know, really tells the story in a solid way. And that leads to the last topic here, folks. Illumination. Because you see, the blood is tied to Japan. It's tied to our DNA. It's tied to Pan. It's tied to the snake, the serpent. It's tied to the Ankh. And now it's tied to illumination and illumination folks is tied into our dna i mean this is a older style light bulb but you know tungsten was used to make filaments and this i didn't graph this up this was i pulled this off of somebody's website it was a real picture but look do you see the two serpents coiled i mean this is the filament but do you see the DNA? I mean, that's why I have the DNA right here. This is our DNA, the double helix, but there it is in a light bulb. And light bulbs, when you turn the light on, you know, the light bringer. I mean, that's what Lucifer is, is he not? He's referred to as phosphorus, the light bringer. Phosphorus is 15th element. That's a link to the, uh, right there. That's phosphorus. I forgot to add that in as well. Link to the serpent. So here it is. Tungsten has a few weights. I showed this was um, the gentleman that I showed that Trump was talking about, the chief of staff. That was his 182. And then you have the 183. This is the most abundant weight of, of tungsten is 183. But notice the word filament, folks, is an outcome of 31 in numerology. 31 is the mirror of the 13, which we showed on the Ankh. Right there, the Ankh. And, you know, this is our DNA. I mean, a light bulb, does it, you see, are your light bulbs going off? What's so special about the 31? Well, the 31, folks, here it is. It appears at the 137th decimal digit of pi. I mean, look, how, look at the power in this. Folks, 33, 33 steps to enlightenment, the 33 steps in Freemasonry. The 33 in your spinal cord, reaching enlightenment in the pineal gland. I mean, are you seeing the great picture of all this? And that's linked to filament and the light bulb, and the light bulb should be going off. And pi, to me, is starting to become the king of everything because you can't fudge that. You can't use different pi ciphers. There's only one, folks, only one. Which is the beauty of it. Moving along, the crucifixion and the crown. You know, folks, is it possible that Lucifer and Jesus are the good cop and bad cop? The opposite polarities. You know, Cain and Abel, Adam and Eve. Primarily Cain and Abel, but, you know, is that what we're seeing here with these two characters? Obviously, you know, the Old Testament was fear, the New Testament was love, the duality, the dualistic matrix we live in. Is this the two characters? Or is Lucifer supposed to sit at the top and just share that space? Well, you know, we talk about the Kundalini, right? I mean, that's the rising of the Kundalini. And that's important in our day and age to get enlightened, folks. And, you know, Lucifer equals 28, matching that of Kundalini. So is Lucifer responsible to ignite the Kundalini to go up? And then is it Jesus's responsibility to take it over from there? And is that why we're told to follow him? It's possible, folks. It's a possibility. But nonetheless, notice that the word crown equals the number 23 again. That's linked to the 23rd letter in the English alphabet, the W. And you know, is this a crown? 
I mean, is 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 this the light bulb going up? I mean, here's another perspective of it. This is my this is my last slide, folks, and this is a big one to finish this presentation. I put this here because it could be a possibility. I show this in the Vesica Pisces video, but folks, look at where it fits. I mean, this is Tin's alchemical symbol. And this is the merging of two worlds. That's what tin means, and that's why it has an atomic mass of 119, and why it's the 50th element. Because, you see, there's many of these in these representations of the Kundalini rising, but is it possible the crown sits over this dome of the light bulb and it's just a so below symbol? A so below element that we use, a physical ab object we use every day to illuminate ourselves, but we never observed it that way. And this is the bridging of worlds. And then you'd have your Vesica Pisces in there. Well, folks, I overlaid the Kundalini and the chakra points and the two serpents going up and intertwining, which is the caduceus, and the, that's why the medical system uses it and then the wings to help you fly away there's our dna right there and that's a direct match of the kundalini so is it really possible that jesus and lucifer are the yin yang the double helix in our dna you know 64 which is the codones the total possibilities of our dna you cut that in half you get the number 32 and 32 is Pan. 32 is Capricorn. So is the other half telling us that it's this character right here, the, the good cop? And then the lower half would be the bad cop? But you got to start here, the bottom, because the Kundalini rests in our root chakra, energy center. And it must rise up through these energy centers up to 33 steps and we reach illumination and then we fly away and that's what's linked to tungsten folks that's why you know it's really challenging for people to understand this if they don't know the methodology and it's hard to explain it to some people because they just don't want to look at these sinks but how can you not when i'm showing these i mean i'm breaking it down as best as i can and i think that this is real folks i don't think this is some kind of farce that i'm showing you you know, I think these are true. This is really how it works. But what is it that you saw during this presentation? There was Random Thoughts version 6. I mean, we had Illumination, which was linked to Light Bulbs, which was linked to the Ankh, which was linked to the Snake, which was linked to Trump. You know, which was linked to the Wizard of Oz. Which was linked to our DNA. To the chessboard, to Lucifer, the Lightbringer, to even the movie The Matrix. To the Greek god Pan. Which led to Japan. Which is the land of the rising sun. And perhaps, there is the 69, there's the yin yang, folks. Which is perhaps... There is Lucifer's number again, which is our origins, folks, our blood. There are the eight blood types, 74 letters, not done on accident, completely, beautifully scripted design in this matrix. Man could never do this on their own. Absolutely impossible. We are all divinely inspired, each and every single one of us. And we're all playing out our role. And I, I'm not too sure on free will, folks, but I do know that it doesn't really matter just follow your instincts and you know what your higher self is telling you to do so that's all i got for today my name is logan for decode your reality this is random thoughts thank you so very much for watching